Good, to be good morning, Revolution, and welcome to this week. Actually, we're going to call this Good Morning Revolution. <laughs> we just got to get the artwork uh, uh, made up. So we have Rosanna uh, with us. Good morning. Good morning. And Anita is with us. Good morning, Good morning. Anita. Good morning, everybody. And Michael uh, is with us. Hello, Michael. Good morning. And not last but not least, uh, uh, Scott Hiley coming to us from the Botanical Garden um, of Eden in upstate <laughs> New York. Scott, I hear that the COVID crisis is off the hook up in your neck of the woods. What the hell is going on? Yeah, it's uh, it's been crazy. There's a there's another there's another surge that at least in the small town that I'm from is worse than the than the original in terms of um, the the rate of positives and the number of people being hospitalized, the strain on resources. You know, I think um, part of it was that people just you know, people are tired and, and kind of let their guard slip, but also, you know, the, the big hospital system that served the area, um, they they let their guard down too. They stopped checking temperatures um, oh. when people came in. Um, they, they really, you know, and plus it, it's the same everywhere. There's just no kind of coherent policy. Everyone's trying to do their own thing. And, is that and Trump's fault or is it just a lack of individual responsibility from Republican dominated areas. I'm just wondering. I, mean, I I think it's I think it's largely capitalism's fault, furthered by you know the the this aggressive you know anti-government agenda of the right. You know th this idea that you know nobody should there should be no restrictions on what you can do with property. Um, mm -hmm. So without regulation, how do you develop any kind of national coherent strategy for something like this? freedom to die. Amita in Ohio, how's the COVID situation? Up or uh, down? It's getting worse. It's, it's, it's up again. And I think, I think Trump really could have, I mean, a long time ago, the Trump administration decided that some states were uh, worth uh, investing in and some were not. And, and I think there are direct, you know, uh, causation between the suffering that we have now and the, the ongoing lack of a plan since March, uh, since January, really. Rosanna, they say it's up in 40 or 45 states, or some wild figure like that. What about California? Has the fire died and COVID died down a little bit, I hope? No, it's still, it's, it's starting to spike. Not as much. They're watching it because there's, you know, more and more opening. I, I just heard Disneyland is going to be opening up soon with restrictions, but uh, it's it's starting to spike a little bit. Just when you at the moment that you think you're gonna be able to open our center and all that, they you know they still haven't they still haven't given us the. I think we're on we're on the red light, you know, when the red whatever signal thing, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody else is in orange or something, but especially in Los Angeles County, it's, it's still pretty bad, but everybody's, you know, you go into a store and you have sanitizer there for you, little towelettes to wipe the shopping carts. Uh, and then of course, all the hospitals are checking temperatures and things like that, so. Be safe people, wear your mask, wear your gloves, stay yeah. physically distant but socially socially close. I know that, Michael, you, 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 the young communists are planning a Halloween party. Uh, is that still in the works? It is. Here in New York City, we're going to do it safe. We're going to go by the city rules to keep it safe. And of course, everyone has to have masks. And the joke is you have to wear two masks, your, your mask <laughs> and then your costume <laughs> mask, right? just to stay uh -huh. safe. But we're okay. keeping the numbers down in terms of attendance. Um, we're going to have a night of carving pumpkins with political slogans because it's just a few days before the, the um, elections and then, you know, food, dance, all that good stuff. Trying to make the most of, you know, this very intense uh, political season. Have a little fun. Good. And who are you going as? Uh, that's Figured a surprise. Out the, huh? <laughs> that's a surprise. A few of us um, were considering going as famous leaders, uh, you know, historically of the movement, you know, Allende, Che Guevara. Um, Vilma Espin, who's Raul Castro's wife, you know, so we'll mm. see. Dimitrov. 
You got to do the, the meat draw. There you go. <laughs> to me, I wonder how to, what that would look like. You know, or grand check. Distinguishing, you know, figure, features that the meat has. So you went Just as, a bunch of guys in know, suits. <laughs> huh? Just a bunch of guys in suits. <laughs> guys in suits. If you went as uh, Fidel, you could have a beard, you know. And uh, if you went as Mao, you could, you know, shave part of your head. I wouldn't have to do that, you know. So you <laughs> see this hairline. If you went as Ho, you could have that long goatee, you know. Or Rosa Luxemburg with the bun, I guess, or something like that. Angela, you could have a big, you know, bro. Um, okay, well, uh, I hope you go as somebody. Just don't uh, pretend to be one of us. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm asking. <laughs> I don't want any impersonations. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I would react to that. You know, it would be anyway. A lot of news in the uh, during this week. Uh, did any of y'all watch the the debate? Debate, debate, anybody? Parts Anita? I watched parts of it. And, and then this morning I heard all the commentaries from people and it, it just seems, uh, it's just kind of infuriating at this point. I just feel like, I wish there had been a little more analysis from our point of view in those, uh, in that debate. And I, Biden, I know Biden gets really good high points for being honest. And, and, and then they, uh, but he allowed uh, the, the media to do this uh, both sides ism by saying, well, he lied about you. It, no one lost their health care under Obamacare. And I wish he had taken that opportunity to say people lost the plans that people lost under when Obamacare started were that those substandard corporate, you know, shill kind of plans where people would face, um, you know, uh, medical bankruptcy uh, if they had the least uh, in, uh, um, illness. So I really think there were some missed opportunities to really criticize the role of corporations and the misery that we're experiencing right now. Who won the debate? Was it was it the people or was it Biden or was it Trump? Or was it a tie? Or the, I tell you, I watched part of it while y'all are thinking about that. Maybe we'll do that as a lightning round at the end. And I thought that uh, the first 20 minutes were interesting, but then they started talking about foreign policy. And I was like, gag me with a spoon. I just can't, you know, China, Korea, you know, all the while they're intervening every place they possibly can. By the way, big victory in Bolivia. Hooray hey. for the Bolivian yeah. revolution. That's, uh, I needed that. That made yes. me feel good. <laughs> it really that was done through voting. That was done through voting. Exactly. Well, vote, voting um, in in connection with you know years of, of organizing of protests and uh, I mean it was you know the, the the electoral victory was the the culmination of a a big democratic upsurge of the people which. Um, or that, that's what it looked like to me anyway. I think that's that's incredible. I, I'm hoping we're seeing something like that now, you know, with these all these these mobilizations since the beginning of Trump's presidency, the women's march, the movement for black lives, the the climate strike, now this record-breaking voter turnout. Are we, you know, are, are we on the, the cusp of uh, of some sort of you know upsurge like that? I think we're in the middle of it. In fact, I, I, I think that we can talk about, I was at a national board meeting. For those of you who don't know, the National Board of the Communist Party is like our political bureau. You know, they used to call that the Politburo. And so our national board was meeting the other night. And I, when I came into the meeting, I had one sense of what was taking place. But I have to tell you, at the end of that meeting, my opinion was changed. I mean, I didn't. I, I knew people were mobilizing. I knew that people were active. I knew that but when I heard state after state from Texas to California, Arizona, <laughs> Illinois, Wisconsin, Ohio, even Ohio that I'd been worried about, Pennsylvania, you know, uh, folks are just turning out. Uh, in fact, I, I read that it's gonna be the highest number of voters since 1906. You know, um, 
1904, I forget when the presidential uh, election was, early voting already. And it seems to me that that's kind of a electoral, mass electoral uprising of our people against Trump, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's good to to point out, you know, all of those features, all of the the what it took to get to where we're at, and what it took to get to where the Bolivian people were at. Remember, not uh, less than a year ago, there was a coup in Bolivia, and right. and the coup, you know, months a uh, few months afterwards, you could tell it was on its way down, just because the people continued to be on the streets non-violently, the majority of the people, of course, there were the right-wingers that would go in and instigate and about 36 people lost their lives during that time. But they continued to continually uh, cancel the elections, but the people continually stayed on the, in the streets to the force the election of October 18th and mm. force, you know, the, the, um, the government to change. And so, and, and force the, 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 I don't, know, I don't know how you call them, coup cool attempters, to get out. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, once again, it's the people who make the fundamental change, the people who do it. And I think that, and, the, and it's the people here, with 50 million people on the, you know, who've gone out to vote, it's gonna be the people who are going to decide and let's hope it really goes our way. And, and you know, yeah. just recently there was that, that uh, so a supporter of Trump who got caught voter doing voter fraud. He signed up his mother who had been dead for five years for an absentee oh ballot. <laughs> Is that right? I didn't yeah, think about so, that. So, you know, talking about voter fraud, it's coming from the right, not from the left. Or <laughs> the line throws a Simpsons episode about that back in the day. <laughs> One of the lines was, the dead have risen and they're voting Republican. <laughs> Well, and the there's thing been that I some, like you know, most about the uh, Bolivarian experience is seeing people dancing in the street, yes. you know? That's a wonderful sight. It reminds me of that old slogan, who was it, Emma Goldman? Or one of the Mother Bloor, if I can't dance, I don't want to join your revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I want to join the Bolivarian mm -hmm. revolution. Well, we got to finish the revolution here first. Right. And then maybe we'll go down and uh, dance and, and What's the name of the capital, La Paz? Of, there are of, two, uh, Cochabamba. Ukraine and La Paz. There are two, okay, okay. Wonderful. So, um, Michael, you were about to uh, say something. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, there's been some pushback as a result of what's happened in Bolivia um, on our, you know, towards our uh, vote, vote against fascism campaign. And people say, oh, well, you know, they were mobilizing for months before. So it's not exactly voting against fascism, as you guys say. it. But I ask, what do you call what we've been doing all summer? You know, with the, the uh, George Floyd protests and even before then, starting four years ago with the Women's March, you know, it's not it's, it's a worker led movement. You see the SEIU, you know, rising up and, and, and taking initiative um, in the past few days, postal workers as well with the, with the crisis that they're experiencing. And so it, it is massive. It is massive. And just the millions who have come out already to vote. And then so we'll see what happens this Sunday, because, you know, the Chilean comrades and, you know, Chilean working class, they're voting for a new constitution that, you know, that gets rid of those old Pinochet, you know, era um, laws and such. And so, you know, we'll see again if, you know, voting in action and, you know, hopefully that turns out on top, but we can't underestimate the vote. We can't underestimate the masses because as Rosanna said, people are gonna turn up, they're already turning out and they're gonna decide this. Now I heard the president, former president speak uh, in Philadelphia the other day. Uh, uh, he was speaking at a, uh, uh, he was on the stage and there was a drive-in, you know, and there were cars, it was kind of a virtual mass drive-in event. And he gave a good speech, you know, the, 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 the man can, can blow, he can, he can speak, you know, but he also kept emphasizing voting, 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 which is, I support voting, voting, voting. Uh, but somehow uh, people separate voting from other forms of political activity and, and, and they don't see the relationship between the two that you've got to, uh, Scott, you're writing an article about that, aren't you? I mean, what, what, yeah, working what's behind on it. that? 
uh, well, just looking really at the what we've been talking about, the, these incredible um, upsurges, both in the streets and around the election, I think what we're being, I think the challenge facing us now is to kind of reimagine or, or think more sharp, sharpen our tactics, uh, our understanding of voting, right? So there's this long held kind of impression, I think, on the, the left that, you know, voting is this kind of lesser form of action. And then you have the real militant stuff over here. And, and I don't think that's right. I mean, voting is, voting is a, is a, is a, tool of struggle that we had to tear out of the hands of the ruling class and it has to be connected to other forms of struggle and um so when people say oh you know is the vote going to be enough is i think we should really be asking is you know what do we need to do to make the vote into that kind of powerful democratic tool rather than just you know kind of conceding the limited role it has under the under bourgeois democracy well, I hope they talk about that, Rosanna, at the upcoming People's World uh, Town Hall meeting on Sunday. It's taking place at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The vice president of the Steelworkers is going <laughs> to be there. Um, and uh, the, one of the leading uh, thinkers and actors uh, and activists in the Latino movement, so Mr. Roca, is going to be there and the head of the Montana Executive Secretary of, of Montana Dems are gonna be there. And so it, it promises to be, Scott Marks is gonna be there. He's a, he's a minister and a leader in, in uh, Unite HERE. So um, it looks like it's, it, it, it should be a, a really interesting event. Mm -hmm. And we hope California, Rosanna, is going to turn out for it, uh, as well as Ohio, Nita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we as will. Well as Ohio. Now, I understand the young people in Ohio, Anita, are organizing a voter turnout project uh, in the name of Tamir Rice. What exactly. is that looking like? Well, it's a great little project that they have. You know, that um, they've been working in Cleveland, uh, our comrades, with the... Um, uh, with uh, uh, Tamir Rice's mother in the Tamir Rice Foundation. And they've produced a booklet that's Vote for Tamir because this year would have been Tamir Rice's uh, first election. He turned, he would have turned 18 uh, this mm. year. Um, and uh, and they're, they're um, educating young voters with this pamphlet, how, uh, especially aimed at, at voters who've never voted before, young people. Um, going through all the steps that they need to take, all the hoops that you know our uh, system makes them jump through to get their vote heard, um, and um, and they're looking forward to the future, emphasizing uh, uh, down ticket uh, ball uh, races that are really important to people's lives. So I think it's an excellent, um, you know, and very very um, inspiring to to vote in the name of Tamir because he can't vote. So it's yes, a next yes, part. indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, folks, it's time for our lightning round. And the lightning round is going to be about the stimulus package. Are they going to pass one before the election or not? Before the election or not? Because, you know, they're negotiating Pelosi and uh, what's the name of the Secretary of the Treasury? Mnuchin. 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 Mr. Mnuchin and Ms. Pelosi, uh, Speaker Pelosi. Uh, are negotiating about whether or not it's going to be, and some are saying yes, and the Republicans are saying no, but it's a dynamic situation, Rosanna. So are we going to pass it before the election? Yes or no? Uh, I don't think so. No. no. Okay. Uh, Rosanna votes no. Michael, yes or no? In my heart, I'm saying no, but I think that if the Republicans were smart on their part, you know, in order to get votes and save them from what's happening, they'll pass it and try to be the heroes. Well, we'll see. Anita, yes or no? That, I'd say no. That's just it. The Republicans aren't going to be smart. What they're doing is being subversive and they're trying to, they know Biden's going to win and they're trying to undermine the economy going forward. So I, that's a little conspiracy theory. No, oh, interesting. Scott, yes or no? Uh, I don't think so. 
I think the Republicans are so set on that provision uh, demanding uh, corporate immunity from uh, lawsuits from workers uh, that, you know, and then Pelosi and the Dems so far have been completely unwilling um, to compromise on that, I think. Um, that's my understanding anyway. I don't think so. I like Anita's conspiracy theory as well. <laughs> well, we got three no's and one maybe. And I think I'm gonna join the no vote. So that's four no's and one maybe. We hope that, that Michael was right. Mm -hmm. We'll see uh, what that turns out to be in, in the next couple of uh, days. Well, I, hope, I think friends, comrades, brothers and sisters, uh, that that's it. That's our program for this week. Uh, we will see you on Sunday at 8 o'clock, 7 Central, 5 Pacific, sharp at the uh, People Have the Power, You Have the Power, Town Hall, uh, and then again next week, just before the election. Uh, Joe, so, I saw something on the website as well about a, a conversation with uh, Boots Riley and another activist. Is that a- Is that tonight? A, a, uh, I think I thought it's the 27th, maybe. Claudia Jones. The 27th. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's that's going to be with uh, uh, Boots Riley and this very distinguished uh, professor from Carleton College. I, I forget her name. Uh, and uh, so we'll be putting that information out as well. So until then, take care. Stay Bye, safe. Stay strong. Stay physically distant, but socially close. Um, Thanks. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Take care, comrades.